A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Ted Goldstein is here to talk to us today about a new philosophy for battling cancer. Ted is a tech executive turned cancer researcher, and he thinks doctors should advance cancer detection by adapting the techniques software engineers use to approach difficult problems. I was vice president of software tools at Apple. Steve Jobs hired me to help with the Intel transition to develop Xcode and the beginnings of iOS and the many wonderful platform technologies that everybody uses today. And I was struck at the time when Steve developed cancer that this was a tools problem. This is a problem that we lack the tools to sufficiently understand. But I didn't have the background yet to do it. So I returned to college and actually got my PhD in bioinformatics and biomolecular engineering at the age of 48. And so you can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> um, Steve, as any patient does, suffers, uh, has to make decisions through this maze of interlocking problems. Are you going to go for surgery? Are you going to have uh, chemotherapy? Will you try radiation therapy? If those don't work, do you go for experimental therapies? Do you go into a clinical trial? Or do you try alternative therapies? And the tools for looking at these problems and choosing which is the right uh, choice for you is very difficult. And I feel like that's uh, a place where the medical world needs to improve. If we actually look at the statistics of who lives and how long they survive, we find that, in fact, one of the biggest issues is how quickly you're diagnosed with cancer and how quickly are you treated. And there's this enormous gap between patients in their five-year survival rate, um, if they get diagnosed early and the cancer is localized, or they're diagnosed late and the cancer is spread throughout their bodies and, ha and suffer through and this is not just a matter of the amount of cancer it is, it is also the complexity of cancer. And I'm going to tell you about how cancer, like other things, are mutations that follow evolution. Nothing in biology makes any sense unless you understand evolution. But if you think about it with, through evolution eyes and the lens of that, of that idea, you find that, in fact, everything makes sense. So you begin life with a few uh, mutations, a few alterations in your genes that can cause cancer. Sometimes this is enough to cause cancer in a child. But most of the time, we have 3 billion A, C's, T's, and G's in our body, and we accumulate these mutations, and they're mostly benign. We get them from radiation, we get them from the foods we drink, we get them from viruses and other things. And those mutations eventually catch one that is we call a driver mutation. It drives the cancer, propels it forward, and increases the growth rate dramatically. When those driver mutations happen, among the things that get broken are the error-checking code that checks the DNA itself. And that error-checking process then begins this radical changes to the DNA. You can actually lose chromosomes, you can get multiple copies, you can get many, many more mutations. And what is happening is you actually don't have one cancer, you have many, you have a whole, uh, uh, spectrum of them, and your immune system is working to kill them. But over time, it overwhelms the immune system, and of course, you succumb. The notion of metastases, of course, is cancer that has followed this fitness curve and has found many niches in the body to live in. So you may start off with one kind of can cancer in one location of the body, but it has found other places to call home. Cancer essentially has all the source code for every program your body has ever run including the programs that were run when you were a fetus and ran during development. And those programs, just punching it randomly, eventually finds one that is able to um, overcome the body's natural defenses. This problem feels to me a lot like a software problem, where it is running amok. And so one of the great technologies that we've developed is targeted therapy. And so treating some cancers is a lot like debugging. You find the bug and you go after it. So for melanoma patients who have the BRAF V600 mutation, we use a drug called verafenib. 
and it goes and finds the cancer cells that have this specific mutation and blocks it and helps the immune system target that. Unfortunately, it's not like debugging because the bugs actually adapt. This idea is that cancer can actually develop these many mechanisms of drug resistance, that it can actually avoid the, plate, the location where the drug was targeting. It can actually become a supercell where it actually kicks out the poison faster than it can take it in. It actually reduces the intake of the poison, and it can actually, one of the main mechanisms that we often use to fight cancer is we target damaging the DNA. Because cancer cells are some of the most rapidly growing cells in the body, we often target that. But in fact, cancer fights us on that, in some sense, by improving and being better at, at fixing the damage from DNA. And that, in fact, can cause even worse in the condition. So with all these problems, how do we understand what goes on? I'm going to talk to you now about a child named Quincy. We're very fortunate that the federal government has created this Cancer Genome Atlas, TC. TCGA, kind of a play on the A, G, C, and Ts that we use. And this is a project that was just finished. It was a follow-on project to the Human Genome Sequencing Project. In that process, we uh, sequenced uh, 15,000 patients. And I did some of the analysis of this. It was really amazing because you get to see these patterns that recur and understand uh, how cancer affects in multiple parts of the body that we'll see the same mutations occurring in different locations, but causing uh, uh, very, uh, almost the same cancer, but very different effect. And so one of the things we developed at UC Santa Cruz, where I was at the time, was this tumor map, a map where we took literally the, uh, the Google Maps technology, and instead of it uh, presenting the tiles of, the of, of locations of, of uh, places on the planet, we had locations in this vast space of the, of the cancer. and it allows us to zoom in. You can Google it and find it yourself. And what's interesting about it is we can then do an analysis of where an individual patient is by seeing how they correlate with all the patients on the map and to see where do they fit best. And we found Quincy. Quincy was between blood cancer, the leukemia, and kidney cancer. And that, of course, gives us the ideas that, in fact, that maybe therapies for kidney cancer might actually help uh, treat Quincy. So what's exciting about this is that we did have a curative um, uh, treatment for Quincy, and these amazing targeted therapies helped. But we don't have this for every patient. And so part of the idea is, of course, that we need to figure out is how do we take this kind of precision medicine where we know an enormous amount about individual patients and how to treat them and give it for everybody? How do we scale up? And the idea, of course, is that with this additional programming, the, a researcher, a doctor can, and can work to improve and to turn your immune system to precisely focus and target your cancer perhaps even going beyond cancer into other diseases, such as Crohn's disease and immuno, other, other autoimmune diseases. So very exciting idea. In the meantime, in the meantime, what should you do? Well, life is, of course, a risky business. And it's extremely important that you avoid things that increase those risks. Number one, avoid risky business. Seek treatment early uh, before cancer has had a chance to spread. And be lucky enough to get a mutation that we actually know how to fix. <laughs> And by the way, increase your luck by do donating to cancer research. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in San Francisco, California. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx San Francisco. Want to listen to the full talk? Find TED's Talk and more at ted.com slash TEDxShorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.